So this video covers the basics of the rotation editor, uh, including the types of rotations you can make, the logic arguments you can use, and how to make changes to the rotation so you can try to improve on it. The first thing you need to do to edit a rotation is make a copy of the one that you're looking at, assuming it isn't yours to begin with. So you can do this with any of the default ones we provide, any rotation someone shares, or any rotation linked in a simulation report like this one that I have pulled up. So I just click here on the rotation and it brings me to the exact setup that that person used. Now you see this warning up here that it is in read-only mode. So you want to make a copy and give it a name. And this is now your rotation and it will show up in your lists. To edit it, click the button up here and you'll see this view. But I'm going to cancel out of that so that I can explain some of the next things a little bit easier. This is a main rotation, which includes all the stuff that you need to simulate your character attacking stuff. And you can see that there are some included rotations, which is meant for reusability. For example, a pre-fight rotation on one outlaw rogue could likely be used for all outlaw rotations. Even if someone makes a different main rotation, you can still include the pre-fight one without having to make it again. Now, let's see what this pre-fight rotation is doing. Uh, I just click to find out what it is. And I see that it's applying all of the right buffs and it puts me in stealth. The pre-fight option is checked and it's set to start three seconds before the boss fight starts, so everything looks good. For classes with pets, you know that pets often have their own basic rotations and those are also pretty reusable, so you can put those as an included rotation as well. For example, a list of pet rotations are included in this one for destruction warlocks. Now, these are automatically executed when a pet is summoned and only when a pet is summoned since you know, it can't do damage if it's not there. Okay, I hope all that made sense. Now, for editing rotations, you probably won't ever have to change that stuff, but I thought it would be helpful for you to understand it. And now we get to move on to the main part of spell rotations, uh, the action lists. An action list is a list of spells that I should use in priority order. So the ones at the top uh, are more important than the ones at the bottom. Each spell uh, or action can have rules of when it should or should not be used. These are often referred to as conditions. These conditions use Boolean logic, which is just a fancy term for using AND, OR, and NOT. All other parts of the condition are basic math things, like greater than or less than, uh, equals, the plus sign for addition, and asterisk for multiplication, and so on. For example, here it says that I should use Vanish if I have more than 60 energy, which is labeled as power. Now a quick note that every class has what the game is classified as a power, like energy, mana, or rage. And then some classes have an alternate power, like combo points or chi. For a more nuanced example of a condition, let's look at Killing Spree. In this rotation, I should use it if I do not have the Curse of the Dreadblades buff, and I also do not have the Adrenaline Rush buff, which are both on long cooldowns. Basically, if I have either of those buffs, the simulator skips past lines 7 and 8, as well as 9 and 10 if those are already applied, and it goes into my finisher, which is what we want. So if you watched the uh, Getting Started video that I had, you already know what the finisher, this finisher line is, but let me take a few seconds to explain that to everyone else and then go more in depth. The finisher line here is calling another action list which is another list of spells with their own priority. Now, you could add the finishers in the regular part of this rotation right here without calling a separate list if you wanted, but I actually really like how calling a separate list in this case keeps it more organized and makes it easier for people to understand. The finisher action list is right down here as we see by the code name, and this list has its own priority and logic just like any other rotation would have. So you see the type listed here is on demand which means that it won't be used unless the main rotation explicitly calls it. So this is a good time for me to tell you that there's three types of action lists. The one we were just looking at uh, is, was listed as auto, which means it automatically starts when the boss fight begins. Now this finisher is on demand, and as I said before, it's only execute if explicitly called. And the third type that I alluded to earlier is a pet rotation, which executes automatically when the right pet is present. So the next thing to look at are the functions that show up in this lovely monk teal color. You might be thinking, while these are, are descriptive, how would I ever know what to use, since they're basically custom variables that you made up for the simulator, right? Good question. Let me actually show you a really handy feature that we put in. Let's say you want to change this condition to run if you have a buff. I just type in buff, and I can see a list of all the things that I could use with the word buff in it and each one has comments to explain how it is used. 
So as long as I know vaguely what I want the rule to be about, anything I type in will produce a list for me to choose from. So those are the basics required for understanding how these spell rotations work. Now how on earth do you go about editing them to make a better rotation? To be honest, a lot of it comes down to the good old guess and test method, but there's a few tricks that can help you get there, which I cover in another video. So if you have any questions, we're here to help. Uh, stop by our forums or drop in the Discord channel and we'll answer your questions. There's just three of us, Swole, Yellow5, and me, Zebracat, and we're all very friendly and very happy to answer any questions you might have, even if they seem noob. We won't judge, I promise.